this. Today you will learn about an extension to Python that allows you to combine the flexibility of Python with the speed of C. The extension is called, not surprisingly, Scython. So Scython is not only a module or a package that you can install in your Python, but it is a real extension of Python with additional functionality for defining C types and calling C functions. In other words, in other words, code that is written in Scython is at first incompatible with the Python interpreter, which means that you cannot run it directly with Python. Instead, the Scython code needs to be run through a Scython generator, which generates so-called C wrapper code, which in turn can be compiled with the C compiler and then results in a Python extension module that can be loaded just like any Python modules. This approach has a major advantage. Since Scython is a superset of Python, any Python module is automatically compatible to Scython, which means that if you have a Python module that you want to speed up, you can simply convert it into a Scython module and then incrementally add more and more Scython keywords to improve the performance of that module. In the next minutes, I will teach you the basics of Python. But of course, there's extensive documentation available online on docs.scython.org. The first important extension that Scython enables us to do is to declare variables and their types. Remember, in Python, we do not typically declare and specify the type of a variable. In C, before using a variable, you have to declare it and you have to specify its type. So in Scython, you do that with the cdef keyword. For instance, if you want to declare three integer variables i, j, and k, you use the cdef keyword followed by the type that you want to use. In this case, it's int for integer, followed by the names of the variables that you want to declare. In the same way, you can also declare a floating point value f. But in addition, you can also declare types that are not directly available in Python. For instance, here we use the C syntax to declare an array of 42 floats. And here we use the star syntax to declare a pointer to a floating point value. The second important extension to Scython. In, remember in Python, we always define functions with the def keyword. In Scython, we have three keywords to define functions, def, cdef, and cpdef. The def keyword in Scython behaves just like the def keyword in Python. It generates a Python function that can be used as usual. If you want to define a function in C, you have to use the cdef statement. Functions defined with the cdef statement can either take Python objects or C values as parameters and can either return Python objects or C values. Within a C module, Python functions and C functions can call each other freely, but only Python functions can be called from outside the module. So any functions that you want to export from your Scython module, you have to declare as a Python function using def. The final keyword is cpdef. It's a hybrid function that generates both that generates both a C version that is being called when possible for speed performance reason, but it also generates a Python version that can be called, for instance, from outside the Scython module. Note here, when defining the function, you can now specify the type of the input parameters. In this case, the foo function takes in an integer and a string, which, which in C is represented as a pointer to a character array. You can also specify the type of the returned variable. In this example, the function returns an integer. Majority of the optimization that Scython can perform is based on the type definition that you provide as a programmer. If your Python code does not specify any type for a variable, for a function parameter, or for a return type, then Scython simply defaults to a Python object and the speed gain will be very limited. Let us consider this simple loop as an example. This code is perfectly valid Python code and hence is also perfectly valid Scython code. However, without specifying any types, the speed gains will be very limited. However, if we add type in information to sp specify that both i and n are of type integers, Scython will optimize this code into a pure C loop and hence we will enjoy the speed up of a pure C implementation. With these simple extensions, you now know the basics of Scython. So now let's look at a real example. In this example, our task is to approximate the integral of a general function f of x. Remember, the integral is simply the area that is covered by the function. In this plot, we want to integrate the function shown by the blue line. We approximate that function by small rectangles of equal width and where the height of the rectangle 
is the same as the function value at the left edge of the rectangle. The area of the integral is simply the height times the width of the integral. And by summing up the areas of all the rectangles, we have an approximation of the total area of the function. Of course, this type of numerical integration is only approximate, but the accuracy of the method increases if we use more integrals. But of course, this also comes at a computational cost. The computational cost is still manageable in 1D, but it becomes a lot more challenging in two or three dimensions. Therefore, this is a good example to optimize the integration code using Cython. To start with, we implement a standard Python version of the integration. Since we know that any Python code is also a valid Cython code, this is going to be a good start for our optimization. Our implementation consists of two functions. First, we specify the function that we want to integrate. In this case, it's sinus of x squared. The second function is the integration function that takes in the left limit of our integration, the right limit of an integration, and the number of rectangles that we want to use in our approximation. The integration function sums up the area of the rectangles from left to right. The variable s contains the initial area and is set to zero. We assume that each rectangle is of constant width, which is defined by the variable dx. In the main loop, we evaluate the function at the evaluation points and sum them up into the variable s. Finally, we obtain the, the approximated integral by scaling with the rectangle width and returning the value. With this pure Python implementation, computing the integral takes around 3.5 seconds for 1 million rectangles. But how do we compile our Cython code? Well, you have two options. First, you can compile it manually. To do so, we create our first Cython file. Cython files typically have the ending pyx, so we name our file integral.pyx, where we store our Python code in. Remember that Python code is legal Cython code. Now the compilation happens in, in three steps. First, we call the Cython command on our pyx file. Cython will then generate a C file that contains the wrapper files. Cython will then generate a C file that contains our functions plus the Python wrapper code that is required to call the functions from Python. The resulting C function will be called integral.c. We then use the C compiler gcc to compile that Python module. And finally, we use the gcc linker to create the shared object library. After the compilation, you have a new file called integral.so and that file can be, can be imported just like any other Python module. After these three steps, you can launch Python and import the f and the integrate f function from the integral module. Manual compilation is a useful exercise to understand the underlying concepts, but it is not very, very user-friendly. A more elegant solution is to use distutils, which can compile your Cython modules automatically. To use this automatic compilation, you have to specify the Cython modules into your setup.py file. In your setup.py, you can use the Cythonize function to automatically have all pyx files compiled by Cython. If you also use numpy in your Cython code, Remember that you have to include the necessary include directories. Once you have made these additions to your setup.py file, you can now compile any Cython extensions with the command shown here in the bottom. We can now compare the timing of our Python implementation versus the implementation with our Cython compiled version. If the pure Python implementation took a normalized time of 1.0, then the Cython implementation without specifying any types takes 0.74 seconds, or in other words, is 26% faster. This is already a good start, but we can gain a lot more by specifying the types. So by simply compiling the Cython file, we only get it minus speed up. The loop runs in C, but we still make various calls to the Python C API, which is slow. In order to get real speed up, we need to introduce types. The first thing that we can do is to specify the types in the function definition. We use a cp function definition to generate both a C and a Python version of the integrate f function. We also specify the types of the function parameters a, b, and n, and we specify that the integrate f function returns the integral as a double type variable. In the function definition itself, we added three definition lines where we declare any variables and we also specify the types. In our case, that's the double variable s that stores the, int the integral. In addition, we have the double variable dx that stores the width of the, uh, of the rectangle. And finally, we have the integer variable i that stores the running index 
for in our for loop. All variables in our for loop now have a specified type, which means that Cython can convert the loop into a pure C loop and we will get the associated performance gains. In addition, we can now also specify the types for our integrand f. Again, we specify the types for the function definition. Since the f function is only used internally in the Cython module, I can use a cdef here instead of a cpdef or, or a normal def. I also specify the type of the input and the output variable. The last remaining trick is the sinus function. If we use the normal Cython function that comes with Python, we will call a slow Python function in the innermost loop of our calculations. For this reason, I changed the input statement from importing the Python module to importing the C implementation of the sinus function that comes with the standard C library. By doing so, the entire integral calculation will be converted to a pure C implementation. We can now look at the full table of our runtimes. Again, these are normalized times where the pure Python implementation takes one second. Simply using Cython without any type definitions got us a 26% speed improvement. By specifying the type of all double variables, we got another 10% speed improvements. By also specifying all double and integer variables, we got in total a 60% speed improvement. And by specifying all types and the sinus function from the C library, we got an almost 10 times speed improvement over the pure Python version. In general, one can obtain even better speed improvements with Cython, but it requires slightly more complex examples. So for instance, if you have double loops, like in higher dimensional integrations. Cython also works with NumPy, but one has to be a bit more careful. Let us look at the following example. Let us look at the following example. We define a function that applies the sinus to all numbers stored in an array. Our function first allocates a numpy array of the same length as the input array. Then we loop over all the indices in the function, extract the a value at that index, apply the sinus function to it, and store the result in the output array. Just like in the previous example, any Python code is also valid Cython code. So you can use this code directly in a Cython module and compile it. But of course, the real speed improvement will be obtained by specifying the types. For declaring data types for NumPy variables, you have to use special data types. You have to use special D types for NumPy arrays in Cython. In the table on the slide, I show you the translation, how you can convert a D type in normal NumPy to a data type in, that you have to use in Cython. As you can see, the Cython data types always have an underscore t attached to the data type name. So for instance, if we want to declare a numpy array in Cython, we use our cdef keyword followed by the type of the numpy array. Note here that we use the data type with the underscore t name. Then when actually allocating that variable, we also specify the d type, but this time we use the normal numpy data type. With that knowledge, we can now implement it a fully typed version of our apply sinus function. You can see that the implementation becomes a bit lengthy, but the principle is, is still the same. I replaced the normal function definition with a CP definition keyword. Then I add the data types of the input variables of the function, as well as the type of the return value of the function. And I specify the types for any variables that are used within that function. Again, I also replaced the standard Python sinus implementation with the pure C implementation that comes with the standard C library. Again, we can now compare the timings. Again, the timings are normalized with the pure Python implementation taking one second. Our pure Cython implementation with full type declaration shaved off almost 80% of that time. In addition, I also implemented a NumPy vectorized version, which in this case is even a bit faster than the Cython implementation. So let's summarize. Here are the benefits and the downsides of Cython. The benefit is that Cython allows you to start from, from an existing Python implementation and incrementally optimize the code. In addition, you can also access, you can also use Cython to access existing C libraries, something that I will show you in the interactive lecture. Typically, the code that is generated by Cython is more co compact and more readable than other solutions like as SWIG. Also, Cython has an active developer community has advanced features and is quite flexible. Cython is often not as useful when you have a large existing library for which you want to develop a Python module for. Also, fully optimized Cython code is typically not as readable as pure Python code.
but overall I would say that Cython should be considered probably as your first choice when you want to mix Python and C code.